This phone was probably the biggest disaster in Nokia's history. Yes, you heard me right. This is the worst Nokia phone that I can think of. What was supposed to be Nokia's answer to Apple's iPhone, the phone that would cement Nokia's position at the top of the smartphone world, ended up being the reason Nokia flagships struggle to this day. Let's talk about the Nokia N97. Before that, here's a message from today's video sponsor. This video is brought to you by App My Sight. Ever wanted to build a fully fledged mobile app but have no knowledge of coding whatsoever? If you have a WordPress website, you can do that with total ease. Thanks to App My Sight, you can create the perfect mobile app within minutes with plenty of customization options the ability to monetize your app, chat with your customers, send out notifications, and much more. Whether you want to create an app for your blog or to sell products using an e-commerce app, App My Site can make it happen. And best of all, you can do that for a fraction of the cost of creating your app from the ground up. So go to appmysite.com and start building your perfect iOS or Android app for free. Then upgrade plans based on your needs. Link is in the description below. Thank you App My Site for sponsoring this video. You might ask, why was the N97 so bad? I mean, it looks awesome. And yeah, you'd be right. The Nokia N97 was definitely a looker for its time. It had a cool chrome finish that goes all around the 3.5 inch display, fantastic build quality all around, and a lovely matte plastic finish on the back. I really like how they integrated the Nokia logo on the front, and even the design of the touch buttons below the display and the menu key look pretty cool. And did I mention that the N97 also featured a fully fledged QWERTY -E keyboard? And that sliding mechanism, once you figured it out, was executed to perfection in my opinion. I also really like some of the small design touches that they've added here and there. Like the text on the back of the sliding hinge that showed off all of its features. And yes, this phone did come with 32 gigs of onboard storage back in 2009, which was just ridiculous for the time. It also had an excellent 5 megapixel camera with Carl Zeiss optics and a dual LED flash setup on the back. And the camera was protected with a sliding cover. And look at how the volume rocker keys and the two stage camera shutter button were integrated onto the design on the side. And you had a dual speaker setup on the side with a slide to unlock key. That 97 in terms of hardware was a real powerhouse. And as someone who owned one back in the day, I almost had no complaints about that aspect of the device. However, despite all of these cool features that I just talked about, Nokia messed up in two major ways. One is a terrible software experience, and the other is a critical hardware flaw that killed any hope that the N97 would ever be fixed with a firmware update. And let's start with the software. The phone was the second device to come running on Symbian S60 version 5, which was supposedly designed to be used on touchscreens. The first device being the 5800. And using the N97 on a daily basis was a pretty inconsistent mess of pain and head scratching moments. There was no kinetic scrolling at launch, which made scrolling through pages a chore. It had a resistive touchscreen, which was a lot worse than the capacitive touchscreen found on the iPhone, which offered a buttery smooth experience. The phone had plenty of inconsistent behavior. Sometimes pressing on an icon once would activate it, other times you had to double press for some reason. The phone suffered from random reboots all the time. In fact, my phone was stuck in a reboot loop about one month after buying it. There was lag, 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 lag everywhere. And the web browser was horrible to use. And I'm probably forgetting a couple of things here and there. A big part of this terrible software experience was caused by the critical hardware flaw that I talked about earlier. For some reason, Nokia used a comically small C drive storage which Symbian was installed on. And the device had memory leaks, which meant that you would run out of the small storage very quickly, despite having about 32 gigs of storage on the D drive. So the full memory caused the device to constantly reboot. And because of the memory leak, yeah, it just wasn't great. This was honestly an incredible oversight and makes me question whether anybody actually tried this phone before they released it. 
Another hardware issue in my opinion was that the N97 was terribly underpowered for how ambitious it is. Yeah, Nokia does have a history of doing this kind of thing. A faster processor would have definitely helped at least remove some of the lag. And by the way, not long after, Nokia released the N97 Mini. It was essentially a smaller N97, but most importantly, it fixed the memory issue. Which tells me that Nokia understood the issue, but at that point, the fate of the original N97 was sealed. Just imagine buying a flagship Nokia phone in 2009 that was supposed to showcase a very strong response to the iPhone and ending up with a user experience that was this unforgivable. But in order to understand why the N97 ruined Nokia's flagship legacy, we actually have to take a step back. In 2005, Nokia was on top of the world. And there's no better proof than the N95 and its later refresh, the N95 8 gigs. Two amazing flagship devices that were very powerful and capable in almost every aspect. For me, this was Symbian at its absolute peak. Fast forward a year later and the successor was the N96. And unfortunately, the N96 was a step back in many critical aspects compared to its predecessor, despite the sleeker design language. Battery life on it was poor, the camera was a slight downgrade, and the phone was definitely slower than the N95. This was the first misstep, but a misstep that Nokia could afford. So the N97 was supposed to be THE comeback. The one that proves that Nokia is still on top of their game, masters of their craft. And most importantly, the one that was supposed to kill the iPhone's hype. Instead, it exposed a real lack of vision and multiple bad managerial decisions that led to this big moment of failure. In my opinion, the blow to Nokia's high-end reputation never recovered from this. And sure, the N8 tried to fix things a bit, but ultimately it didn't, even though it was a much better effort. By that point, Symbian's reputation was as good as dead, and this ushered Nokia's Windows Phone era. But you know what's sad and kind of ironic? Nokia actually did release a worthy flagship just three months after the release of the N97. It wasn't as nicely designed and its operating system was not as mature as Symbian. And it barely got any marketing effort compared to the N97. But that device was amazing. They had more powerful hardware, double the RAM, and a user experience that absolutely embarrassed Symbian. And best of all, it was incredibly flexible and built for tinkering. That device was no other than the Nokia N900. You can watch the story of the N900 and why it should have been the savior here.